What are endogenic processes? First, these are geological processes that occur beneath the surface of the Earth. In other words, it is associated with the energies that originates from the interior of the Earth. Second, endogenic processes in geology are a function of a body's internal ge geodynamic activity. So, it is comprised of volcanic, tectonic, isostatic processes which shape the surfaces of all terrestrial planets, the moon, and basically all solar system bodies with solid surfaces that have been observed in some detail. Lastly, the study of endogenic processes and their resulting landforms and landscapes puts important constraints on the internal evolution and the surface history of a geologic body. What cause endogenic processes? The forces within the earth that cause the ground to move are called endogenic forces. These internal forces lead to vertical and horizontal movements and results in subsidence, land upliftment, volcanism, faulting, folding, earthquakes, and etc. The origin of endogenic force is caused by the contraction and expansion of rocks due to variation in thermal conditions and temperature inside the earth. Function of endogenic processes These endogenic processes cause many major landforms features. They have been responsible for shaping the earth's geologic structures and the formation of many of the most important mineral resources. Types of endogenic processes There are different types of endogenic processes. There are folding and faulting, interior heat, magmatism, metamorphism, volcanism, and plutonism. Let's start with the first ones. Folding and faulting. Folding. Folding is the process by which folds are formed due to compressional forces. This happens when two forces push towards each other from opposite sides. Second, faulting. Faulting is the fracturing and displacement of more brittle rock strata along a fault plane either caused by tension or compression. The process of forming a fault is called faulting. Second endogenic process is the heats in the Earth's interior. There are two types of interior heat. First one is the primordial heat. Primordial heat is generated during Earth's formation. Sources are accretion energy, adiabatic compression, and core formation energy. Sources of primordial heat. First, accretion energy. is the heat released from collision of planetary objects during the early formation of planets. Second, adiabatic compression. This is the heat generated as materials are compressed. Lastly, core formation energy. This is the heat from the Earth's core. Second type of heat that occurs in the Earth's interior is the radioactive heat. Radioactive heat is generated by the term radioactive decay. The third endogenic process is magmatism. This happens when magma is generated and develops into igneous rocks. Magma forms at mid-ocean ridges, mantle plumes, and subduction zones. Now, how does this happen in these three different places? At mid-ocean ridges, the rising magma in mantle convection cells brings heat to the surface, transferring heat to the overlying rocks. At mantle plumes, the transfer of heat and the compression results to magma generation and the source of heat for mantle plumes is usually much deeper. At subduction zones, oceanic crustal rocks are formed along spreading centers, typically beneath several kilometers of seawater. The fourth endogenic process is the metamorphism. It is a process of changing materials that make up the rock. The chemical components and geologic characteristics of the rock change because of exposure of the heat and pressure. The following are the behaviors that influence rocks. First, compression. Rocks push or squeeze against one another 
where the stress produced is directed towards the center. Second, tension. This happens when rocks pull apart and when this happens, the rocks may separate in opposite direction. Third, shearing. When shearing happens, some of the portion of a plate at the edge may break away in different directions, eventually making the plate smaller inside. Lastly, confining. When this happens, the crust become compact, thus making it look smaller. Last are the volcanism and plutonism. Volcanism. It is the phenomenon of eruption of molten rock, also called magma, onto the surface of the earth or a solid surface planet. Plutonism. It is the formation of intrusive igneous rocks by solidification of magma beneath the earth's surface.